but is actionable for most people. Um, so we'll dive right in. Now, when I say the word design, design means a lot of different things to different people. Um, it often means uh, product design, and, and, and many people in the sustainability world are very much um, focused on objects and, and the sustainability of objects, especially the environmental impact. And that's really important. So some of you may have be, some of you out there may be responsible for for developing and putting into the market physical objects. So this is part of what I, I mean when I say design, and part of what we should be covering in terms of sustainability. But it also encourages uh, it also includes things like service design, whether that's physical service design, like you know the service you get in a hotel or in a retail environment, or if that's for, for instance an online service. Both are included in something called service design. So that's going to be rolled in to what we're talking about. It also includes um, what is known as experience design. So whether it's an event you're designing or whether it's um, some other kind of experience or environment, like a retail space, sustainability applies to these, and design principles that will, and strategies that we'll be covering also apply uh, to what the principles and the tools that I'm uh, going to cover today. So by by saying shorthand, by by using the, the the word design as a shorthand, I really mean all of these design, including business design. So ultimately, sustainable uh, strategies, design strategies, should affect the design of your business, especially your business models. When you get really good at sustainability um, and really experienced, this effect has this, um, these principles have an effect on the business itself that makes um, uh, the entire organization and everyone in it uh, become more sustainable. So design is all of these things. A really good shorthand, so I'm sure the shorthand that everyone uses, is to use Apple as an example where Apple has pushed their design and, in fact, their approach to sustainability into everything that they do, whether it's a retail environment or a product or a service, and they get working together in an ecosystem that's incredibly effective. So if you ever need an example of who's doing this well, Apple is actually a really good example. That's pretty much all I'm going to cover about design, but I wanted to mention one other thing. I'm going to use the word design a great deal because it's a word that I'm comfortable with, but it's not just design from a classic uh, designer standpoint. When I say design, it could mean product engineering to you. It could mean product development. There's a lot of terms here that still apply or that all this material will apply to. Um, so if design isn't the most comfortable word for you, just substitute development or substitute engineering or substitute whatever. To start with three, this isn't a list of 20, for instance. Um, the first one I'm going to cover is called Natural Capitalism. This comes from a book by uh, Hunter Levins, Amory Levins, and Paul Hawken. It's actually a really good pro-business approach, also known as eco-efficiency, to lay out a roadmap for how we as a nation, we as a society, we as a world, we as an organization can become more sustainable. And it does so by, by sort of first defining four types of capital. Um, they have financial capital, which most people in business are pretty familiar with, human capital, which, rep which represents the value that employees and partners and uh, other human stakeholders have or, or um, provide to the organization, and then natural capital, which is very often um, natural resources. Um, they define a fourth kind of capital called manufactured capital, capital, which is everything from inventory to intellectual property. And so by taking this business-centric approach, um, it's very easy for organizations to digest this information and put it to use. There are five important principles that come out of the natural capitalism framework. One is that we need to radically increase our productivity immediately. Uh, and this buys time uh, while we develop other sorts of uh, approaches and technologies to do more than just uh, increase efficiency. Um, we need to make use of biomimicry and other kinds of um, ecological uh, principles that we can learn to, to make better products. We need to turn into a service and flow economy, so there's that service design again showing up, saying we can sometimes provide more value as a service where the product just becomes an artifact of the, the service and not the focus itself. We need to invest in natural capital because it provides ecosystem services that we don't, we don't tend to value financially, but are really, really critical not just to business 
uh, and, and business viability, but to life. And then we need to think in whole systems. So this is, in essence, the, the framework around what natural capitalism teaches us. And like I said, it's a very pro-business um, uh, uh, principle or framework that's described in very big lot done here. Um, there's something called a social return on investment, and essentially it's an LCA, it's a life cycle assessment for social impacts. Um, this is even less defined and less standardized than LCAs are, um, and I hesitate to even send you out uh, uh, into the net to look at some of these tools because they're so, they're so ill-conceived at this point, they're so new to in their development that I want to introduce the idea of doing a social return on investment, um, but I think that if you were to each attack um, the building of your own SROI, you would probably build something uh, better than what exists out there. I don't really want to knock what's out there. It's, it's a good start, but it's very easy to translate social impacts like uh, this drug delivery system will save this many lives, um, lives are worth this on an actuarial table, therefore the social impact of this new solution is X million dollars in you know, worker productivity. Um, that's not a bad way to, to approach um, sustainability and the impact and value of sustainability for those folks in an organization or in a government that just can't think in, in any other way but finances. But I want to caution you here that, you know, this is the same thinking, essentially, that led uh, Ford to not fix the gas tank on the Pinto, because they essentially did an SROI. They measured the financial impact to the company of the, you know, insurance, legal costs and insurance payouts of how many people they estimated would die in a rear-end accident in their Pinto versus the economic, uh, the financial impact of fixing the gas tanks. And they estimated that not fixing the gas tanks and paying out money whenever they needed to, to was going to save the, the company money um, over, you know, going back and fixing all the Pintos. So they used this kind of framework to justify not fixing the, the, the Pinto, essentially. So just because you're using a, a social return measurement tool doesn't mean it leads you to necessarily the best answer. And that's why I don't want to go into these very often. But we do need to consider the social impacts in some way of measurement so that we can make those cases to our managers. And um, Probably the third reduction strategy in terms of importance is substitution. And if you're a manufacturer, um, taking and evaluating the materials that you use, the raw materials that you are used in them, the energy that's used in um, producing and transporting that device, and substituting them out for less toxic or less uh, expensive or less sustainable or, or more sustainable materials um, is a really important strategy. So here we have something like the mirror chair, which is essentially the Aeron chair redone, because the Aeron chair Though it was incredibly successful, it was expensive, and part of the reason why it was as expensive is that it was incredibly wasteful. So much waste was left over after a chair was created, because that was never part of the criteria that they were designing around. So the team in Germany who created the mirror chair basically said, let's create everything in a chair that's every bit as great as the Aeron, but with an eye, uh, an eye towards waste and an eye towards material substitution. And so we have the mirror chair, which is, I believe it's 98% recyclable or 99% recyclable, and um, also includes a lot of recycled materials already in it. Uh, simply by substituting materials, tweaking the design, substituting sometimes where your energy comes from. Safeway here in California, especially in Northern California, buys its energy from PG&E for its stores, from wind power as opposed to from coal fire power plants. That's an energy substitution strategy that creates a positive economic uh, uh, influence in the market towards sustainability. So by substituting materials and energy, we can create more sustainable solutions just for what we're creating already.